So Nikkor has been well known for coming out with some very unique and innovative flashlights. And that's certainly true of the latest one I have for you. This is their EDC 27. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. Just before we get started, I just want to mention that Nikkor sent this light out for, to me so that I could share it with you, but it wasn't at my request. It actually came inside of a package with another product from Nikkor that I will be reviewing at a later date. I wasn't expecting this, and honestly, when I first looked at it, I wasn't even sure it was something I wanted to review or it had any interest in until I started playing with it. And then I really got to appreciate what it was all about. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the light's key features, its specifications, and its modes of operation, and then we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. Before we focus in on the light itself, I thought I'd share with you what came with it. So this is the box the light arrived in. Inside of the box, manual with warranty information, USB Type-C charging cable, and a lanyard. Kind of a different lanyard from what I'm used to seeing. I'll show you very quickly how it attaches on. It has a little threading assist is the best way to describe this. So it would, there is a spot on the pocket clip, another feature of course, installed on the light. It is removable, but not easily. But then again, I don't know why you would want to remove it, but you can see where the threading device would go through and pull the lanyard through and you're good to go. Now, let me just share what else it came with, which is a built-in non-removable 1700 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Let's just go through a few of its key features. So it has a max output on turbo of 3100 lumens. That's no small amount. It was very, very impressive. 3100 lumens. It has something that I think Nikkor kind of pioneered and is famous for. I'll show you some more details, but on their screen there is an LED display which will show you your battery percentage that's left, the runtime left on that battery, and what lumen setting you're in. All the information you'd want to know. It also has both a semi and full electronic lockup. Both have unique uh, applications for it, which I'll explain when we get to that. It has something different, not seen on a lot of lights. I don't know that it will show up, but right between the two LEDs is a proximity sensor. Now, the whole point of that is, is if you had this in your pocket or it was laying down on something and it had been on turbo or another high, like the 1100 lumen high setting, it would automatically reduce the output to 200 lumens. So you're less likely to cause damage from the heat buildup. It does also come with a two year warranty. All right, I'm gonna quickly go through the physical specifications for the light, but of course this will all be repeated in the video description if you're interested in seeing those again. So the overall length for the light is 5.33 inches, 135.3 millimeters. The width at its widest, what are right about here, is 1.24 inches or 31.4 millimeters. Its thickness is 0.887 of an inch through here or 22.2 millimeters. Its weight is 4.3 ounces, 122 grams. It is equipped with two LEDs. They are known as UHI-20. It's a new one on me. I hadn't heard of those before. They put out a lot of power, as you're going to see. The material, at least the body material, is stainless steel with a titanium coating on the outside. The light does have an IP54 waterproof rating and an impact resistance rating of one meter. As far as the specifications go, as mentioned, it has a turbo setting of 3,100 lumens. I mean, that's very, very impressive. And you'll see that when we do a, get outside to do the demonstrations on it. The literature does not give a runtime for it on turbo, but you will be able to see graphically the bar running out of, I don't want to say running out of power, we're running out of runtime, and I, I estimate it's about five seconds on turbo, and then it drops down to the 1100 lumen high setting. So, yes, 1100 lumens on high, still very impressive, and that will run for one hour. 35 minutes, which is also very impressive. It has a medium setting of 200 lumens running for four hours, 20 minutes, a low setting of 65 lumens running for 
15 hours and an ultra low of 15 lumens running for 55 hours. Now ultra low is relative of course it's not a one or a half lumen setting like a moonlight but it is still very low and still low enough that it doesn't destroy your night vision. And just before we go into the operation of the light I thought I'd give you a few close-ups and talk a little bit about its design. So as you can see at just over five inches long it's a little long but boy is it ever thin through here and what that happens is that makes it drop down into your pocket almost unnoticeably and of course it's not very heavy either it actually rides in your pocket very very nicely and quite deeply you can see what the pocket clip would take you to about here just enough for you to grab on to pull the light out with so I actually do find it very comfortable in my pocket now I will say that I had carried I have been carrying this in my pockets but mostly in my front pocket I just find it a little long for my back pocket not long in terms of being uncomfortable just a little bit that I am concerned that it sit down and damage it like you might if you carried a cell phone in your back pocket I really don't think it would it's very very strong stainless steel construction so I don't think it would get damaged carried in your back pocket it was just as easy for me to carry it in my front pocket you can see that there are textured grips on the sides both sides. There is a little bit of texturing right up here with this protrusion that covers over the pocket clip and actually helps to hold it on in place. I, it's comfortable. I don't know that it provides any additional functionality, but it doesn't get in the way either. Here is the USB Type-C charging port on this side. There are two buttons on the top which we'll be talking about in a moment for the operation. First off is the power button and the other one is known as the mode button and they have distinct functions of course. Now I do want to show you the LEDs because this really is in some ways the star of the show. Those two UHI 20 LEDs in there. They're set quite deeply in in orange peel type reflectors so you get a kind of a unique combination of flood and spotlight at the same time. Very, very controlled light and they seem to be just slightly angled so it looks like just one single beam when you cast it. Again, you'll see that when we get outside. I think it works uh, very, very well. I haven't, don't think I've tried another light that has that combination that has that same uh, functionality. And again, of course, here is the LED display on the outside to show you everything that's going on with the light. Honestly, it's great for checking in on your battery status, but I don't necessarily use it for anything else because you'll know what lumen setting your is or what zoom lumen setting you want to be in just by running through the cycles. All right, let's talk about the operation of the, of the light and we'll get going. So, as I mentioned, there are two buttons. There's an on-off button, power button right here. Now, each of these buttons has the same feature in the sense that they can be partially pressed or fully pressed and each will give you something different. For the power button, if I partially press it, it gives you the ultra low, that 15 lumens. So just partially press, there's a slight delay and then the light illuminates. If I fully press it, it locks the light on and it locks it on in whatever lumen setting I set it for, which has a memory for the last lumen setting. So put it down, I believe I left this on high, so you can see and press it again and you release it. So it's a partial press for the ultra low or ultra, and full press for the preset lumen setting. Nice feature, it really is, I quite like that. Now the one beside it known as the mode button, I think that may be a little bit misleading in terms of what it actually does because it does two unique functions and that is it provides you with turbo and strobe. That's it, just turbo and strobe. And in this sense, it actually turns this from an EDC light into a reasonably good tactical light. And this is what I like about it. It has all the features that would make it a good tactical light. So if you're looking for a low profile light that can serve as EDC, EDC or everyday carry, and for tactical purposes, I think this might be a good one to look at. So once again, the mode button has two positions, partial press, and that will give me turbo. This is gonna be bright. I just don't wanna leave it on because it uh, will cause the camera to dim out. And then if you fully depress it and it still springs back, it gives you the strobe. So it doesn't lock on strobe. Both of them are temporary 
partial press gives you the turbo, full press gives you the strobe. And it is an alternating strobe, so it uh, is not consistent as it runs on. Okay, so those are the basic operation of the buttons on top. But I do want to talk about the electronic lockout. So when the light first arrived, it was locked. And for the life of me, until I read the instructions, I could not figure out how to unlock it. So it took, a, there was a little bit of a learning curve there, but now it makes perfect sense. And it is something you are going to want to learn how to use. And I'll explain why first. So when I started carrying this in my pocket, after I learned how to unlock it, of course, I found that inserting it into my pocket so that the pocket clip came on the outside of the pocket, I had to push it from the top of the light. Makes sense, right? Except that you're pushing on the operating buttons, either the power or the mode button. One or the other, you're pushing it down in your pocket. Uh, there is a trick for not turning the light on in your pocket, as you'll see in a minute, or I'll explain in a moment. But this is where the electronic lockout comes in handy. So there are two types of lockout. It's either semi or full lockout. Semi lockout locks out the power button. That's all it does, the on off button. So you won't have access to the moon, uh, not moonlight, ultra low, and you won't have access to the preset but it does leave you access to the turbo and strobe. So you still have a tactical light, you just won't be able to access the others without unlocking it. The full lockout actually turns all the buttons off. And the easiest way to operate this is you push and hold on the power button. You'll see on the screen, it'll say partial lockout or semi lockout. And if you keep holding, it goes into full lockout. Up to you which one you want. I recommend that you do practice using that because it will it save you from un, unintentionally turning it on in your pocket or having something bump it while it is in your pocket and turning it on. Well worth knowing. Now, I did say there is a bit of a workaround, and this is what I discovered putting it into my pocket, is that I didn't hesitate to push on the mode button, knowing that when I pushed on it, the light was going to come on, but I could push it into my pocket so that it sat in deep enough because when you take your finger off the mode button, it stops working, right? It's only a temporary push button. So if I pushed it down here and then it uh, went into my pocket and released it, the light turned off. So it was really very, very simple to use it that way. But once again, I do recommend that you uh, learn how to use the e-lockout. So what I want to show you now very quickly is the LED D display. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the light on first off in the 15 lumen ultra low and it will show up on the screen and if I press it down all the way so that it locks on it'll show the lumen setting on the screen and it will run through not what, only what lumen setting is but how much time you have left on the battery if you left it in that lumen setting. Same thing can be said of the turbo and the strobe running it on the other side. And again, it does show you semi-locked and fully locked. So you know what's going on when you can't turn the light on. Oh yes, it's locked. To unlock the light is, I think, just as simple. It's a double tap, power button. Partial press and then fully press and hold it. And you'll see the lock unlock itself. It takes a second for it to run across the screen and unlock itself. It sounds complicated. And when I first figured it out, it was a little complicated. But now that I've practiced it just a few times, it's very intuitive. You, once you understand it, you understand it. All right, let's get this light outside and do some demonstrations. We're doing some nighttime testing for the Nightcore EDC 27. Now, I'm going to start in low rather than ultra low. Ultra low is just not going to show up past a, a few feet in front of the camera. So I'll start off in low. And in low, that's my shed. It's about 50 feet away. And it just starts to illuminate the neighbor's backyard. I can see, but it's not really illuminating a whole lot. Let's see, tap it up to medium. Medium, we start to get, well, actually a fair amount of light. I can see my full yard, my neighbor's yard. Doesn't quite reach past my neighbor's yard though. Take it up to high, but high does. High reaches up quite a far ways at all of my yard, my neighbor's yard, and to the next neighbor up beyond that. And let me just turn that off and let's try turbo. That is a lot of light. A lot of light. Mostly, 
Well, actually there's some pretty good distinction between the two. Turn it on again, you can see how quickly it drops down there, where it dropped down from turbo to the 800. There's a nice central hotspot surrounded with a good ring of flood. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Nightcore EDC 27. And uh, to begin with, as I mentioned in the opening of this video, I wasn't expecting this light. It was a complete surprise when I opened the box up on the other product that Nightcore had sent me. And as I said, I wasn't sure that it was something that I wanted to own, review. I wouldn't have asked for it. But now that I have it, now that I've learned how to use it, I can see the potential for this light. It is known as an EDC light, but I see it as a good uh, alternative tactical light or doubling as both EDC and tactical. Yeah, it's actually quite an advanced light in a number of ways. Now, there are a few things that I really like about it and there's something you need to be aware that, well, it's not a deal breaker, but you really do need to be aware of it. First off, what do I like? Okay, you know what? Those two UHI 20 LEDs, not something I'm familiar with and other lights, provide a whole lot of light, right? 3100 lumens on turbo. Now you're not going to have turbo for very long, but that will illuminate a room up, a backyard up, as you saw when we got it outdoors. It provides a lot of light. I like the fact that the turbo and the strobe are segregated or separate from the on off button and the other lumen settings. And uh, yeah, it's really makes it easy to access them instantly without having to go through a whole set of procedures to pressing different buttons. I like that the power button controls and offers you first access to ultra low. That's often something you want in a tactical situation as well, but also a preset. So you can have the preset for either the low, medium or high, and it'll be there when you want it. And you know what? That makes a great choice. I think that's where the EDC part of it comes in as well, because you don't always want the highest light when you're working somewhere in a room or outdoors. So it's nice. The LED display on the outside is nice in the sense of not so much confirming what lumen setting I'm on, but how much battery status I have. It actually gives me the amount of time. It's not like a series of dots that will suddenly start flashing when you start to run the battery down. You know very clearly how much time you have left from that display. The pocket clip, very stiff, very secure. I like the fact that it's got a mate black a finish on it. It actually sits in my pocket very unobtrusively. The thin body of this does mean it will sit deep and flat in your pocket, making it very comfortable to carry. The only thing I would say about it is, is not that the light is a little long, but be aware of the length of it when you put it in your pocket so that you don't unintentionally damage it. The fact that it's made from stainless steel, I think really protects it against that damage. So it's not that it I'm it's likely going to damage, it's just you know, I've, I carried it in my front pocket and found it perfectly comfortable there, and I knew I was lessening the chance of damage it. Now, here's the one thing you really need to be aware of. If you put this on in turbo, or even on in the 1100 lumen high setting, it won't take very long before you cannot touch. I don't mean gets hot, I mean gets very hot, almost blistering hot at the tip of the light. Now, if you're using it in turbo, you're not gonna be able to hold it on for very long anyway, and it's gonna drop down to the lower setting. But even at the 1100 lumen setting, this got hot. So if it did get turned on in your pocket and you didn't realize it, you would feel it within just a few seconds to a minute. So I just wanted to point that out. Again, not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of. It can really get hot at the end of the light. Okay, that's everything I wanted to say about the Nightcore U, uh, EDC 27 flashlight. I'm really quite impressed with this. This is probably going to go into my rotation more often than I originally thought it would, and I think it may be something you want to take a look at yourself. So what I'll do is be putting the links as well as all the description in the video description, but I ask if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.